Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get to the new information on both of these tropical waves. I know the National Hurricane Center paints this one in at 40% developing. Uh, doesn't really touch on that one uh, too much yet. But what I'm seeing is both will develop. Uh, they are going to develop. It's just a matter of when. And we've been talking about this for weeks and weeks that this time period would get active. I do believe at least this area becomes a tropical storm. And then at least this area becomes a tropical storm. Both areas that I've highlighted here have the potential becoming hurricanes uh, down the road, especially as we work our way deeper into next week. Where they go, all that good stuff, I'll be tracking it for you storm by storm. Hopefully they avoid our islands, hopefully they stay out to sea, but more and more it looks like these are going to be driving off toward the west, at least that first one. And I believe this first one will be developing as it is in the Caribbean. So this is going to be an issue for some of us, but we're going to track it. I'll do the worrying behind the scenes. You just uh, track it with me. Let me do the worrying and kind of uh, figuring out exactly where this is uh, uh, going to end up going. Now, on the uh, smaller picture here, it is settled. That is good news. There's still no name system out there in the Atlantic Basin, and we are deep into, eight, uh, into uh, August. So that is good news to pass along. At least we don't have a bunch of things out there, but there are two now to watch short term, some areas of rain and storms have been watching that. Uh, kind of this little cluster near Puerto Rico uh, south as you get closer to the ABC Islands we'll see a chance of a couple showers, but it's this here that we're watching. Alright, so we've got this cluster here. There's a little disturbance here that's going to be feeding in and giving us some scattered showers and storms in the Eastern Caribbean, right? But it's this spot here, and then this here, and then another strong wave that will be coming off. These are atmospheric uh, waves that I'm speaking of. Now look at this map. If you joined me about two weeks ago, you see this orange shading? That was pretty much all across the Atlantic Basin. That orange shading, this is a snapshot of the mid-levels of the atmosphere, that is dry air, some of it is some dusty air and sinking air. That's stable air. That's our friend. I don't want these systems to develop, but this is now either to the north or down to the south. The moisture in the atmosphere is building. That is not a good thing. So conditions become even more conducive as this moves to the west. I also look at what's going on, uh, not just with the dry air, but the wind shear. Wind shear is a good thing, and there's not a whole lot out ahead of this. Those would be winds in the opposite direction, knocking off developing showers and storms. The wind shear outlook down the road is low so that this is going to develop and this on its heels ends up in a pretty uh, uh, moisture uh, environment, a moist environment, uh, so I believe both will develop. Let's start with that first tropical wave, that first tropical disturbance. The ICOM, the American, the European, and the Canadian all now have this developing into at least a tropical storm. Uh, the American model does bring this uh, to uh, hurricane status, and even the ICON and the Canadian are trying to eventually make this area a hurricane. Okay, so what's going to happen? What do we need to do? Nothing yet other than spreading the word about this potential system, right? Now, as this starts to work our way, I'll be monitoring how quickly it develops. There are more signs that once this gets into the Caribbean, that's when it could flare up into a stronger trop tropical storm, and yes, the potential of a hurricane. Now, I don't want it to develop at all, but the slower it develops, if it is going to develop, that would be better. We don't need anything rapidly intensifying, but over the next few days, just kind of taking its sweet time out there and let's let it take its time. I don't want these to develop. But here's the bigger picture. The American model here, very similar to all the other models. I showed you how all of them are showing development. Now, also keep an eye on the Gulf of Mexico, buildup of rain here, no signs of immediate development there. So let's go out in time here uh, with this uh, computer model. And I mentioned they're all pretty similar. Some extra rain in the Bahamas on Saturday. This is Saturday and you see it right there. This is different from what I showed you yesterday. It is showing more organization. Uh, what the computer models are seeing is what but what I'm seeing is that the environmental conditions ahead of this are conducive for development. So by the time we get into Monday, we'll be watching out for this area, a tropical disturbance approaching Barbados. At that point, we could have some heavier rain that's going to get close, especially by the time we get into Tuesday. Another buildup of rain. I'll keep an eye on this just south of Jamaica, but it's this area here. Look at Tuesday. This is later in the day. This is when it could be developing into a tropical depression or even a tropical storm right on top of us. Could be right on top of uh, Dominica, uh, right on top of uh, Guadalupe, St. Lucia, as the potential of a developing tropical storm. Let's just hope it's not a hurricane at that point. We could we could handle it if, if it's not. And then look what happens as this area moves in uh, Thursday near Puerto Rico, near the Dominican Republic. Here's Haiti. 
just to the south, this is when conditions really become conducive for development. So this is deeper into next week. That's when it could be a stronger tropical storm and then eventually become a hurricane. Now, what happens at this point? This is by Friday. So we are looking at seven, eight days from now. You see this area right where my hand is, right here near Hispaniola. This may be over here or it could be over here. This is seven to eight days away. We know together that these things change, but I like to let you know everything I'm seeing. I don't want to hold anything back. Uh, there's that p a potential of a tropical storm or a hurricane nearby somewhere in the central Caribbean by the time we get into the end of next week. On top of that, we'll be watching this area here, which will also be developing into a tropical storm or hurricane. That's that second one behind it, right? Now that one has a little bit more of a likelihood to make a curve. So that would be some good news. Not that I ever wish this on Bermuda. I'm hoping you see this rain here. I'm hoping that this front continues to work its way over here, kind of helps grab this and steers that out to sea. So that's the hope on the back one. But that first tropical disturbance looks like at least in the short term, it's going to go to the west and then it could get pulled by the front. This time of year, you get more fronts up in here, especially as we get into September, where eventually this could lift up to the north into the Bahamas. It could lift into the Gulf of Mexico. That'll be a wait and see. But there's a much higher probability that both of these areas will be developing and that some of us will be contending with a tropical storm and the potential of a hurricane as we get deeper into next week. So please spread the word about this, but then I'll be fine tuning it island by island. And this does make sense with climatology. It is the busiest time of the hurricane season. The peak of the hurricane season right here is September 10th. So that's when, on average, we have the most named storms, most activity out there. It usually stays very active through about mid-October, then starts to drop off. This season, though, with the water temperatures, with La Nina, uh, it could be active even as we get into late October, early November. The end of the hurricane season is the end of November. Now, I mentioned what's going on above our heads, right? I mentioned the dry air is leaving us, and there's not a lot of wind shear down the road. Both of those are not good, and neither are the water temperatures. And this is what my concern is. It shows a system nearby moving in for us in the Eastern Caribbean. Could be near Barbados, St. Lucia, Monday and a Tuesday. Uh, maybe a tropical depression, maybe just a, a, a lot of rain and storms and not a named system yet. But the water temperatures here running at about 30, 31 degrees Celsius. So we're well into the 80s Fahrenheit, 85 to almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So the water temperatures are warm. And I know I've talked a lot about this, but this is so very important. These are those hot pockets, if you will. This uh, red shading in here. If this area, even this orange right in here, just north of Barbados, uh, very close to Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, this is very warm water at the surface and it's even kind of warm down below. That's the heat content. So as a hurricane goes over these areas or a tropical storm or just a tropical disturbance, it churns up the water. Sometimes it churns up cooler water. Usually uh, it churns up cooler water and that's a good thing because the cooler water uh, doesn't help feed these systems. These systems feed off the warm water. Now the heat content in here is so very warm. So as something goes over this and it churns up the water, it's just going to churn up more warm water and that just continues to fuel it and that's why we've seen things rapidly intensify. That's what happened with barrel. Uh, let's hope it's not anything like that, of course, uh, but watching that because as this moves toward the Caribbean, conditions become unfortunately more conducive for development and that potential of a hurricane in the Caribbean is, is uh, possible by later next week. So giving you that early heads up, we don't know where it's going to go yet. Now in the short term, scattered areas of rain and storms. There's that extra rain over toward parts of the Gulf of Mexico, back toward parts of the northern and central Bahamas in particular. This is by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon. And then as we go through the weekend, all eyes, of course, will be what's going on to the east of us. And this weekend, I'll have a good handle on how strong this area will be and where it's going to go. And even importantly, where it's not going to go. So you don't need to waste your time in resources preparing for something that's not coming uh, uh, our way. But you see here, as we work our way forward into Saturday, scattered areas of rain and storms. And there's that area right there. You see here, this is by the time we get into Sunday. A lot of moisture building. This is uh, September coming at us. I've been highlighting that, the extra moisture around. And then this area will be approaching. This is the cluster that will start to work near Barbados by Monday with at least some heavy rain, right? At least some tropical downpours. And then we'll see if it does try to spin up right on top of us and then eventually try to develop into a stronger tropical storm or a hurricane as it marches through the Caribbean, the middle 
and end portion of next week. Eastern Pacific side, we've got a couple of diminishing systems out here, so that's better news for Hawaii. And then jumping to the north, we have that front move by. Still a couple scattered showers and storms on the back end of it, my friends, in the Atlantic region of Canada. And I'll be keeping an eye on the Atlantic region of Canada, Bermuda, because sometimes these things curve to the north like that second tropical wave has a higher likelihood of doing that. There's another front that will eventually roll in by the time we get into Saturday. Could see some scattered showers and storms in this. You see that stretching all the way down right there. That's by Saturday. Now, as far as the rain goes, central Bahamas, we are going to have a few pockets over the next couple days, over 75 millimeters of rain or three to upwards of four inches of rain. That's the extra moisture that has been around. Scattered showers and storms could give some of us 25 to 50 millimeters of rain. Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic back through Puerto Rico and the rest of the northeastern Caribbean passing shower. Anguilla, St. Martin, over toward Antigua, and Barbuda, and Dominica. Of course, uh, all of us watching off to the east as we'll have this uh, system uh, developing and you see the scattered areas of rain and storms may get a few heavier pockets around occasionally for a three day rain total. Some of us could get 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain and that rain chance has picked up northeastern Venezuela right back through uh, Guyana and then just scattered areas of rain and storms. Parts of Costa Rica, Panama, Guatemala, we've had a little bit more and stretching back toward uh, Mexico, scattered Belize and uh, Honduras back through El Salvador. Now you can see here Mexico City, we could get some flooding. There's a little bit more more in the way of a, a rain potential over the next few days with moisture building across Mexico. So for today, not a washout in Jamaica. Some of us are going to stay dry, but a 50 to 60% chance of scattered showers and storms the next few days. Will that system out there come toward the Cayman Islands, come toward Jamaica a little bit too early to tell. So I'm just watching it and seeing how it develops. And as it does develop, I'll have a good handle on where it's going to go. 30 to 40% chance of some scattered showers and storms in the Cayman Islands. Trinidad and Tobago, we're looking at a 50 to 60% chance. And running at a 50% chance across Barbados, staying unsettled, we're going to see that. There's a lot more moisture around. So scattered showers and storms possible. St. Lucia, scattered showers and storms possible in Grenada. And a 50% Chance, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Rain chance the next three days in Martinique at 40%. And we're looking at a 40 to 50% chance the next three days in Dominica, about a 40 to 50% chance just to the north in Guadeloupe. Rain chance the next two days, Antigua and Barbuda, we have a 40% chance, 40 to 50% chance in Kits and Nevis, Montserrat, not all day. Scattered showers possible, 20 to 30% chance in Guilla and St. Bart's over the next two days. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia, the rain chance an even 30% and a 30 to 40% chance of some isolated to scattered showers and storms in Puerto Rico, a 30 to 40% chance right into the weekend, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and a 40 to 50% chance in the next two days in the Bahamas. But the best chance will be central Bahamas, New Providence, just to the south. That's where we have a better chance of rain. Turks and Caicos, a 30% chance. Scattered areas of rain and thunderstorms in the Dominican Republic, and about a 30% chance over the next two days in Haiti, isolated shower storm. 40 to 50% chance in Belize, and we're mainly dry in Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, but because we've had more moisture around, there is a slight chance of a shower, but either way, it is going to stay very hot. Rain chance has gone up in Guyana. I was mentioning that. A 40% chance today in Suriname, just a 20% chance tomorrow, and a 40 to 50% chance of scattered showers and storms across Cuba. We swing back toward Costa Rica and Panama. Some of us dry, others dealing with some areas of flooding. 50% chance the next two days in Nicaragua, and a 50% chance of showers and storms the next three days in in Honduras. Rain chance elevated now. Guatemala and El Salvador are watching those river crossings for that potential of flooding. 60% chance the next two days in Mexico City and a 50% chance across the Yucatan Merida back toward uh, Cancun. Northern Colombia, 40% chance the next two days, 30 to 40% chance in northern Venezuela, especially northeastern Venezuela. And the rain chance in Bermuda will pick up a little bit as we head toward the weekend. So we now have a couple areas to really watch. Two main areas, uh, one just to the east of us. And I do believe that is going to develop and it will develop further in the Caribbean. And I'll be fine tuning where that goes. And we have that other area near the coast of Africa that looks like it will develop. Let's hope that one stays out to sea. September on average is the most active month and it is uh, going to start out very active with the potential of two named systems uh, somewhere out there in the Atlantic Basin. And we could have one that just slides its way right into the Caribbean. So thank you for spreading the word just to add the awareness about a potential system out there. I will keep you post it behind the scenes. Have a good rest of your day.